So today I said I was going to bring you some more sleeve hacks. I've got two more for you today. This first one is going to be a puffed sleeve and the other one is going to be a cuff. A cuff that you can use high up on the arm to create a flare or further down to create a flare at the wrist. But for now I'm going to show you the puffed sleeve. So we start with the basic sleeve that we've traced from a block. You've got to be aware that the block that you're going to use, you must use the same arch at the top for your original sleeve because otherwise it might not sit nicely when you've created your final garment. So the first thing we have to do when we do this, we have to take this and we have to divide it up. What we're going to do is we're going to do the slash and spread like I did for the last one, except we're not going to cut part way through, we're actually going to cut completely through. And I will show you. So what we're going to do with this one is we're going to do the slash and spread. I have already gone to the trouble to cut my sleeve into portions. I will show you how it's done. So the idea the idea is you're going to spread these out and the thing that I think would be best is if you're able to actually spread them out so that they form parallel lines. As you can see I've cut and I've spread the sleeve. Just a point I want to add, what I have done is I've actually cut the base off because this part is actually going to form the circle at the bottom that um, pulls the puff in if you like. So this here is what I've done um, including for the seam allowance. So I've got one and a half seam allowance and normally there would be a hem included but because I've cut it here I need to add back the seam allowance and I will do that when I cut this part out. So the next part to do is um, the thing to be aware like I said is we need to add a seam allowance because we're going to have a joined hem so the principle is we need to add according to this pattern one and a half centimeters which I'm going to add along the bottom over here we're going to basically create a new pattern to cut out for the sleeve actually wishing I hadn't used sticky tape right now I think you can see the principle. This is going to form the new outline if you like. So the thing to remember is the seam allowance is already included at the top here because the original pattern had a seam allowance. The idea is you need to smooth out these new jagged edges. And the best way to do that is to take a center point for each of these. And then what I will do is I will remove these pieces of paper and I will create a new curve. So now you can see I've traced out the pattern and I've been careful to add back the back notch and the front notch. The thing I think you will notice is the back notch and the front notch are still fairly close to the ends. And this is because you don't really want it to be fully puffed where it goes under your arm. I think you would agree the puffing that you want you want to achieve in this portion over here and in this portion over here. The next thing I will do is this part needs clearly, sorry that's upside down, clearly needs to have a seam allowance added to it. So just for completeness I will show you how it's done. 
There's already this hem allowance at the bottom. I need to add the additional seam allowance at the top where I cut it from the original piece. So this will go in here. The thing I would suggest you do is the first time you do one of these is either compare it to a pattern that you have that you've already used if you're a beginner like me or to try one out on a bit of fabric that you can throw away anyway and see how it fits. You can also use it for finer adjustments like checking which part exactly you want to be puffed and which part you don't want puffed, like for example the underarm portion. And there you have it. The thing to be aware of if you're going to borrow from another pattern is you can borrow the fullness but you still need to be aware of what the curve should turn out like and which side as I said is the front and which side is the back. So for the cuff that I'm going to show you what I have done is this is the full size sleeve from a block that I've used from so many dresses so little time. All I've done for this, this exercise is I've cut a small piece to match the end over here and here's the matching one and I will show you how you can create a flared cuff from this. So the first thing to do you want to try and work out on your wrist how far up you want the cuff to start. So there's nothing stopping you from doing the same exercise where you have a cuff that flares from the elbow or you have a cuff that flares from the actual wrist and flares over the hand. It's completely up to you. The principle is exactly the same. What we're going to do is we're going to do a slash and spread but with a little bit of a difference. If you can imagine we want to create a circle or a cone, a circle or a cone shape that goes around the wrist. I am going to use eight divisions for this because it turns out the smaller the divisions that you have, the easier it is to actually get the radius from this portion at the top. So I got this handy roll of paper from Amazon. I'll have to check for you and see if they've still got stock. I can really recommend it. As you can see, you can even see the markings through the paper quite clearly on my cutting board. And that's quite good if you're wanting to mark out and make changes to patterns. It's also very good at transferring patterns from very faintly printed pattern sheets. If you wanted to, there's nothing stopping you from literally taking the measurement across here, which I make 31 centimeters, and creating a circle with the compass, and then creating a second circle to match this. So you'd have two concentric circles. That's one way you could do it. Because remember, my pattern that I've used already has the seam allowance built in over here and it already has a seam allowance. The only thing to be aware of is you would have to add another centimeter and a half because I've cut it away from the original pattern and this part here would need a one and a half centimeter seam allowance added. So the idea would be because we've divided into eight we can get our points here this is definitely the more fiddly way to do this okay so we have this one and then on the outside do the same thing, remembering to add a centimeter and a half seam allowance. And for the 
purposes of this, I'm going to just trace the circle out first. I can add the seam allowance after. This one happens to be off the sheet. So we've done that. Remember to add a bit in the middle over here. Sorry, that's crude. And you don't need to actually add on the outside because the seam allowance is included. So we have our two concentric circles complete. The only thing that I would add to this is depending on what fabric you are looking at to create this, if you were going to use a border print fabric for example, you would probably have to cut it similar to a Godet skirt, as in cutting it in panels radiating out from the center so that you can get the border print all the way around the outside. Um, the other thing that you can do is if you don't have the space on the tracing paper there is nothing stopping you from only tracing out half the pattern and cutting it on the fold. I can't see any reason why you couldn't do that. The only other thing too is when you actually sew it you're going to end up sewing it about a centimeter and a half off. What you might want to do is you might want to actually snip these once they've been sewn. And again, depending what fabric you're using, it's probably going to be a good idea to use an overlocker to make sure you don't have any rips or oopsies when you're actually using it. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you think. If there are other things you'd like me to include, please let me know. At some point I'll move on to bodices and I will explore what's coming next. Thank you. Until next time. Bye.